Welcome everybody to Unfiltered with Pastor David. How are you today, Pastor? I'm good, John. Thank you. Uh, this afternoon, Pastor, I wanted to ask you about the importance of our church family, or even on a grand thing, on a more grand scale, the importance of having a church family to the Christian and to those who are part of a fellowship. Yeah, you know there are there are those who are incapable of having a an opportunity of attending church services for several reasons. Sometimes they may be incapacitated, maybe having to stay at home and all. And so they are, they're voluntarily remaining home, but they have to because of illnesses or whatever. We know that. Because sometimes people get hypersensitive even over the idea that it would be good for them to be part of a church family. Many people have been hurt in the past and perhaps have been uh, hurt or at least perceived hurts from members of the uh, the church that they attend, you know, church community that they're part of, and so they they are hesitant to go. Sometimes, like recently in the last couple of years with the COVID and and all of the things that were said and missaid and believed and shouldn't have been believed, all of the confusion and all of that. Um, there are those who stopped coming to their fellowship um, because of uh, perhaps a fear or perhaps their own illnesses. And so you have to take a lot of things into consideration before you make statements like, like I'm about to make concerning community and fellowship. I, I really believe that it's very important for someone to have a, a church home, a place where they have friends and a place where they can exercise their gifts, a place where they receive instruction from a, from a shepherd, a pastor, teacher who actually rightly divides the word. And uh, there's hardly anything that I encourage people to, to do more than to be faithful in their attendance of their home fellowship, to exercise their gifts when given opportunity, to, to um, bring their gifts, their financial support to the ministry and all, and, uh, you know, to develop relationships within that, that group, that community of believers, because loneliness and isolation are, are terrible things. The first thing God ever said, as I've said to you, we've talked about so many times, John, that he ever said was not good, was that the man should be alone. Mm -hmm. And so there needs to be a community, there needs to be relationship, there needs to be a place where I can have a fellowship, you know. All you need to do is pick up your, your concordance, you know, uh, one of those books that helps you to find different words in the Bible. And you can pick up a, a Strong's Concordance, for example, and you can look up the words one another because it'll list in scriptures where those words are joined together. And you see so many things that pertain to the church. You you pray for one another, you love one another, you confess your faults one to another, you serve one another. You, uh, you, you, there's such a variety, I could keep, you assemble together with one another. There are so many things that are one another verses. And when I, I first began to examine what the church was intended to, to do and to be as a young uh, Christian and then later on as a a young pastor, I, I was really taken by the amount of verses that relate to family life, to, to the one another aspects of, of Christianity. If you read uh, conclusions and salutations, for example, if you look in the book of uh, Romans in the last chapter, chapter 16, and you see all these names, greet this person, mm -hmm. greet that person, you know, and names of, of people that are familiar to one another, then you realize that, that, that the church was made up more, of than, more than of people who simply showed up once in a while when they felt like it, when the kids weren't playing soccer or when the game wasn't on. Uh, they showed up because it was vital. They, they showed up because they knew that without the, the, uh, the fire of fellowship, without the prayerfulness and the love that could be shared and the hearts that could be mended through mutual ministry. They knew that, that those things were important, John. And the church was under stress and persecution very early in its history. And 
and and that that need to be together was even more emphasized at that time, more important. So if there's anything that I see in the church today that stands out brightly, it's that people voluntarily um, cease uh, attending fellowship. They voluntarily stay home, and not because of any sickness or, or other things, just because they do. And so I, I really believe that in this fellowship, we call it a community because that's what we have. We have things in common that bring us together. It's a community. And I, I never wanted to pastor a church that was made up of simply strangers who attended for a variety of reasons. I wanted to be used by the Lord to produce a, a group of people who, when given opportunity, and we give ample opportunity, could actually develop relationships with people that would benefit them. And so the church has been called out of the world to be with Christ, but to be together with other members of the body. Yeah. You can see that in Ephesians and Romans and various other books of the Bible where the body life, 1 Corinthians, where the body life is described from the very beginning when they, they in the book of Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, they gathered together for the apostles' doctrine and prayers, breaking of bread, etc., and those kinds of things. And it showed us that they had a regular, regular attendance, a regular meeting, a regular community, because that's what God intended. Mm. I think back in my own life, in times where I was probably the most loneliest, uh, whether it was coming out of addiction or lost of family members, family loved ones, uh, that it was the, our church community that really brought that family love to me. And that was really important and significant in my own growth because I found out that there's people here that are not just like me but have gone through very similar experiences. And it really fostered community. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think sometimes people have this idea that uh, they can be that lone ranger and they don't have to come to church. Mm -hmm. But they're not only missing out on the Word of God and the fellowship, but they're missing out in that community, the, the Jesus people community. And that was very significant to me. I know you spoke about that in your early days with Calvary Chapel, that uh, there was something different at the, at the uh, I don't know, it wasn't a Bible study you Is went that to. The chapel, at the, the chapel, the small chapel that they, they had before they built the, uh, had the tent or built the, uh, their, 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 their church buildings. So would you say at that moment, and you know, fast forward years later, you're now the senior pastor of our church, but you saw that love firsthand by that community. I experienced that love, you know. It's one thing to see it, it's another to be part of it. Yeah, I was, I was uh, taken by that. And again, you know, that by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And I saw a visible demonstration of that. I, it, it happened actually prior to me first going to the Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa. It was uh, first experienced after getting saved and even prior to getting saved, going to a friend of mine's home where he would have fellowship with Christians who would show up and all. And I was already getting to know some of his new friends who were believers in Christ. And, and I saw the difference between those whom I hung around with and those that my friend now was hanging around with. I saw the difference. It was visible. It was real. There was a warmth. There was a, a kindness. There was an interest. And uh, all of those things that were shown to me as a person that they really didn't even know. And so it, it really surprised me that you could have a kind of a pure friendship without a I'm going to use you or you're going <laughs> to use me kind of thing. That we actually had a pure friendship where they were more they knew it was more blessed to give than to receive, and so they weren't expecting anything from me. So yeah, so I experienced that prior to salvation. I went into the church, and the first time I, I sat there on the carpet with a, a couple hundred other kids, and and I um, experienced it in an emotional, even a spiritually awakening kind of way, a convicting way, so that after getting saved, I knew that, that these were people I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. These were people that meant more to me than, than even my, my physical family. These were people who were closer to me than a brother in, in many ways, and it remains that way to this day. So yeah, John, I, I, I believe that people are really missing out when they don't share their life with people. Watching church services is not the same. Right. It's been said it's like watching 
a video of a, of a fireplace fire just sitting there. <laughs> you know, you're looking at something that's real, but you're not really part of that. And so when people are watching us online, when they could really be with, with us or their home church, but they watch online because they can sit there, drink their coffee, mm -hmm. talk in between, and not even concentrate. If they think they're going to church under those conditions, they're not. Right. They're not experiencing real life. They're not experiencing what a church is supposed to be, which sometimes it's a bit messy, mm -hmm. but it also is a place that we learn from one another and we grow and all of that. So yeah, for those, of, those who are watching who have chosen to stay away from their church not just our fellowship, but whatever church they may attend, it would be of great importance for them to, to wake up and to come in and, and re return to their home. Uh, they're missed by those who know them and love them. And there are people waiting there to become their friends that mm -hmm. they've never met even yet. So I would, I would encourage them to do that. And so you hear the invitation for our, from our pastor to come out and join us for our services because there's nothing as you mentioned I remember my mom would give for before we had a fireplace she would get this this cardboard box that looked like a brick chimney mm -hmm. and then you'd plug in a light and it mm -hmm. was the light bulb for the fire yeah <laughs> you mentioned the yeah. fi the fake fire and I thought of that but uh, when you were, were worshiping together and, and getting in God's word together then people are fellowshipping afterwards there is that's the spirit moving and and it's very important especially in this time of the season where uh, there can be a lot of difficult things going on. And so you hear our pastor inviting us back sure. into church and come join us. We'd love to have you. Matter of fact, we have our services tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. as Pastor David, you're taking us to 1 John. 1 John 3 tomorrow. 1 John chapter 3. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then on Sundays, uh, you're taking us to Mark. Mm -hmm. And it's been, both studies have been very rich. And even as we're in the Garden of Gethsemane on Sundays, last couple Sundays, and, uh, and looking at Jesus. It's just amazing. You guys got to come on out. December 18th, it's going to be in a couple of weeks, the we Katinas. have the Katinas yeah, the, coming out, which I is a great that. opportunity to come out and invite your friends and family to join us in that time of worship. And, and then the following week, we have Christmas Eve, yeah, and then Christmas we have Christmas Day. service, Christmas mm -hmm. Day services at 8.30 and 10.45. So we have a lot of opportunity for our church family to come back together Amen. and join and to be with one another. So Pastor David, thank you so much for sharing with the, with us. And you guys, thank you for checking uh, for tuning in. And we look forward to seeing you in our Wednesday services and our Sunday morning services, 8.30 and 10.45. Pastor, thank you so much. Of course. God bless you guys.